before he passed away in the summer of 1993. And I remember sitting on their porch, and uh, I'm mixed race, Japanese, and um, African American. And I remember sitting and looking at them and, and wondering, wow, you know, if my parents had been these amazing activists, would I have been a better person or something? I mean, my parents were great, you know, but I was in a, in a kind of a fantasy mode. And so that's, that's where my story began with Grace and Jimmy Fox. Um, and then um, in, um, I think it was in 1996 or 1998, we, um, students and faculty and um, alums from San Francisco State, along with Gwen Kirk, um, brought Grace to the Bay Area, and it may have been one of the first times she came to the Bay Area, was introduced to the people here, here, um, through a political um, weekend called Creating Political Fire. And um, she did exactly as others have described. She listened, you know, she gave advice, she shared her wisdom, but she was really there to listen to us. So um, that's my story, my introduction to Grace, and it would be great if each of you can say how you met Grace. Um, I first heard about Grace before I met her, and that was through Adrienne Marie Brown. Um, she's a dear friend of mine when I was working at Movement the Young. Woo! Adrienne Marie Brown. Um, so Adrienne Marie Brown uh, was writing a lot about her, and then when I was at Movement Strategy Center, she would talk a lot about how Grace was talking about this visionary or organizing when we were in the place of writing a, book, uh, a report called Out of the Spiritual Closet for Activists, really wanting to be in that visionary space of organizing. Um, so it really informed all of the writing and work that we did and the lens through which we thought about transformative movement building when I was at Movement Strategy Center. So I already, and I started reading her books and just got so excited and energized because I saw the world that was possible instead of the world that I, I was reacting against and others I knew were reacting against. Um, so when I went to U.S. Social Forum as part of a group of organizations that was doing transformative movement building, spiritual work, so, um, physical practice, healing work at Social Forum in Detroit, I was thrilled that Adrian told me they were going to be celebrating Grace's 95th birthday there. So were any of the folks in the room with that thing? That was the, the most magical thing and one of my fondest memories because I know how much Grace impacted Adrian's writing and work. Um, I saw, I could see how she touched so many others, and I think one of the precious moments to me was um, Adrian singing happy birthday to uh, Grace at that, and my heart just melted, that, because I come from indigenous community and this relationship of elders and passing it forward, and so that, I felt the energy of how her legacy and how she would leave things for, moving forward. Um, I want to just acknowledge that I feel so honored to be on the stage today um, and have to be invited into this conversation. So thank you for having me. Um, like many people probably, I met Grace's politics before I met her as a person. And um, it was also the social forum when I was first introduced to who Grace was. Um, and uh, at the time, at the forum, I actually didn't get to meet her because I was a youth organizer at the time and I had brought a young person with me to Detroit. And so we were running around, you know, trying to see all the other things, 10 million things going on that weekend or that week. And, um, but uh, people were really talking about this Asian American elder, Grace Lee Boggs, and how important she was to Detroit. And seeing her imprint on that space and her politic on that space around visionary organizing, I was like, I gotta learn about her. So that's when I started to read her and um, really got to meet her through her words um, and her interviews. And then in 2012, um, I was a community radio producer with Apex Express on KPFA, and me and a couple of my yeah, me and a couple of my homies um, at KPFA got to um, we set up an interview thanks to Scott Kirshige and the Box Center, and um, we got to go to her hotel room and sit down with her. Um, with a microphone and uh, have an intimate conversation with her. And that is when I was struck by the beautiful, powerful being that she was as a person. Um, and I'm realizing I'm emotional and uh, unexpectedly emotional today, um, <clears throat> which is beautiful. Um, and uh, for me, it was seeing beyond her politic and seeing herself and seeing her humility and her brilliance. Um, and the affirmation and acknowledgement she had 
to us as young people to say, to listen, and um, to say she saw us. Um, and she's relying on us. <laughs> so she also instilled that responsibility in us. Um, so that was how I met this. Thank you. Um, I think I probably met Grace before most people in this room. Uh, back in 1968, and it was the year of the, the year after the major Detroit rebellions, and I was living in Newark, New Jersey, which had also had a major rebellion two weeks before Detroit in 1967. So I was anxious to kind of compare notes with people in Detroit, and uh, Stokely Carmichael, now known as Kwame Duray, and I was a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinated Committee at the time, said, "Well, you got to get out to Detroit." And if you do, there's two things you should do. One of them, you should go see Jimmy and Grace Bonds. And the other, you should go see Aretha Franklin at her, at, at her dad's church singing gospel. <laughs> so a small problem was that I went to see Jimmy and Grace first. <laughs> and I, I never got to see Aretha Franklin. <laughs> so uh, it was great being able to talk to them. It was a time after the rebellions when people were asking, what, where do we go from here? And not having clear answers, and there were a lot of different constellations, organizations, particularly out of the Black Power movement at the time. And what I found is that Jimmy and Grace seemed to have the most focus and clear sense of what should be the next steps. Not necessarily the revolution itself, but basically how do you or begin to talk to people about new kinds of issues, new kinds of problems, and basically going beyond simply complaining and looking for the system to resolve it. So I moved out to Detroit in 1971 and ended up a year later living across the street for the month in 72, so I got to see them quite a lot. Um, I'd like each of you to imagine or recollect the time you met Grace, Grace and Grace and Jimmy. Um, and if you were to meet them now, what would you want to learn from them? Just something to think about as we go to the next um, question. Um, so everybody.